Hello everyone, my name is Jacob. If you're new to this channel, welcome. And if you've been here a while, I know I usually post things more fitness related or pole dancing related, but I'm also a makeup artist, so this is kind of a side of me that I've wanted to show on YouTube for quite a while. So I thought I'd kick it all off by doing a male makeup tutorial. Um, I've looked at everything that's online and I wanted to post something that's more undetectable, kind of seamless makeup that any man or even woman can wear during the day if you want to look like you're wearing absolutely no makeup and just kind of correct some imperfections, bring out uh, all the good sides that you want to accentuate on your face. Uh, and yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. So before we crack on, please make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and you have hit the bell to receive notifications of whenever I post new videos. And make sure to check out all my other social media, especially Facebook and Instagram, which I'm going to link into the description box below. So let's get started. So we're going to start off by priming the face and when it comes to myself or uh, clients whenever I'm doing more of a no makeup makeup look, I like to use something that's very lightweight, uh, preferably water based, nothing that's going to sit too heavily on the skin. So if you have a very good moisturizer that's quite lightweight that you're very happy with, uh, you can just use that. I like using this. This is the Hot Springs Gel by Urban Decay. I think this has been discontinued, so if you can get it anywhere around you, get it. It is amazing. It's instant hydration for the skin. It just transforms the texture of the top surface of your skin immediately. Uh, however, if you can't find this anywhere around you, because I, I think it has been discontinued, so you won't get it in stores anymore, uh, anything water-based, anything lightweight will be fine. You don't have to do serum, moisturizer, primer, all of that if you don't want to. You can literally just find something nice and lightweight like this and use it as everything. So all I'm going to do is open it up get a little bit on my finger and just, sorry, I'm just using my <laughs> camera over here. And I just kind of spread it all over the face. You don't need a lot. And then I just rub that in. So I'm going to try and not use any brushes for this tutorial whatsoever, because since it is kind of more of an undetectable male makeup tutorial. I assume the guys who are watching it maybe don't have brushes, don't have sponges, don't have all of that. So I'm just going to show you that you don't need a lot of expensive products. You don't need anything super crazy. You don't need an entire kit of brushes and all of that to, to do a simple makeup look. Sometimes when it comes to looks like this, uh, less is more. I know that essentially in the makeup industry, especially on Instagram, where the, the looks are quite bold, more is more, but for this particular look, it's going to be less is more. So you just want to rub that in. And now this step is optional. If you do have some under eye darkness, you can do this. I like to do this on myself. I like to go in with a color corrector. So I use this one by Urban Decay. It's the peach color corrector, but Bobbi Brown have very good color correctors. And you can find other brands out there that do good color correctors as well. Cryolon does good ones. Uh, and I only use the tiniest bit of this. So I put a little bit on the back of my hand. You can use it directly from the wand on your face, but I'm kind of a hygiene freak, so I like to just kind of keep everything nice and clean. So I sanitize my hands before ever touching any makeup, and then I just do everything on the back of my hand. I'm just going to use my ring finger. This is the weakest finger on your hand, so given that the skin under the eyes is a lot thinner than anywhere else on the face, you kind of want to. I'm just going to use this mirror because I feel like I'm looking to the side all the time. You kind of just want to use this one on the delicate skin under the eyes, and I like to just tap it in. When I'm doing undetectable makeup, I don't like using concealer that much, especially if it's on myself or on, on um, another person that wants it to look like it's not even there, because the nature of concealer is that it creases. It's, it's a heavier product. It does crease, even when you have those concealers that say, ah, oh, crease proof, all this proof. It just doesn't crease as much, but concealers crease. Like we have, unless you're 12 years old, you will have lines under your eyes and it will set into those lines at some point in the day no matter how good that concealer is. So I just like to use color corrector instead. And that kind of cancels out the darkness. So when I go in with my base, it's not going to be that hard to cover. And also, if you want it to be natural, like naturally, the center of our face is going to be a little bit darker. So if you suddenly brighten it up with concealer, 
it's a dead giveaway that you are indeed wearing makeup. So I just like to pat this in with my fingers. Fingers are actually really good for liquids and creams because they have a temperature to them, whereas brushes and sponges don't. So it's actually going to help melt the product. And you just tap that in. So I didn't need a lot, and that's just kind of canceled out that darkness underneath my eyes a little bit. And now I'm going to move on to my base. So you can just use like more of a medium coverage foundation, just kind of dot it all over the face and spread it out, um, kind of sheer it out instead of having it more medium to full. But I like using this. This is one of my favorite products of all time. Uh, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Unisex Healthy Glow All Your Hydrating Summer Tint Moisturizer. <laughs> that was a mouthful. It is more on the pricey side. You can go to the drugstore and find a nice BB cream as well. Uh, but I love this one because it kind of gives you a gentle tan. I don't know how well this would work with like darker skin tones because I've never tried it. Uh, I've only ever tried it on myself, um, but it does kind of adjust to my skin and give me that nice little uh, summery glow and that summer tan. So I just apply this with my fingers. Just take a little bit on my hands. And I'm going to just dot that all over so I make sure that I have even distribution of product. Sometimes I just start blending in one place and then by the time I get to the rest of my face I have nothing left. Sorry, I'm just using my um, camera over here. Guys, I just had something on my lips that was gross. I hope that was the product. And I'm sorry if I'm looking to the side but I'm just rubbing that in and this is just going to even the skin out for me. Normally I'd use a mirror but Using both hands is just going to get this done a lot quicker. I don't really put any on my eyelids because it does adjust to the skin, so it's not like my eyelids are going to be a different color. And I just rub that all down the neck, all around, so I don't have any of those places where you can see my actual skin color. <laughs> Uh, and especially guys, if you have beards, you want to make sure that this line over here, that you don't have that product really settle in those lines. So I'm just going to blend that out as well, just with my fingers here, around the nose. And that's all it really takes for just a simple base. You don't need a lot more. Uh, I like to keep it really lightweight. I can't even feel that this is on my skin and that's how I like to keep it. Next step, once again, is optional. You can literally just powder this up in the areas where you get a little bit oily, use setting spray and call it a day if that's that's what you want. If you want to add a little bit of a bronzer, I have a very good trick for that. I'm going to use a medium coverage foundation. This is the Naked Skin by Urban Decay. Obviously, you can tell that this is a lot too dark for me, but if you're going to buy a BB cream, which I do recommend if you want a seamless makeup look, get a darker BB cream and then just use that as your bronzer. And then in the summer, when you get a little bit more tanned, you can mix the two together and then you don't have to buy a new base. You'll just darken the one that you already have. So it actually comes in handy a lot. This shade eight is obviously about at least four shades too dark for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tiniest bit here. I'm going to use this as my bronzer. And by tiniest bit, I mean literally like, I don't know if you guys can see how much I'm going to put on here. That's how much I'm going to use. <laughs> that is all I'm going to use. And you can do this with a sponge. You can do this with a brush. But again, sticking to the rule that I'm using mainly my fingers, I'm just going to dot this over here. Now, in terms of where you bring it, um, I'm just spitting all over my lips. I'm so sorry. This is so gross. Um, in terms of where you bring it, if you don't have a beard, you can allow yourself to bring it a little bit lower. Uh, however, because my line is right over here, if I bring it lower, it's going to barely leave anything here. So I kind of like to bring my cheekbones a little bit higher and bronze up this area. Um, but if you don't have a beard, try to not bring it too high because then you'll end up with a huge jaw, which... If, if it's your thing, go for it. If it's not, you know, I'm just going to dot this here. I'm going to put the rest on the other side. Like I said, I like to do mine quite high. You don't have to do yours quite high. I have quite a large forehead, so I do a little bit here as well. There you go. Just kind of give it more of a round shape, and you can just use your fingers to blend this in. I like to just use patting motions, and I'm just going around the perimeters of my face. Just like this. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I like to give myself a little bit of a tan. Uh, if you ever watch beauty videos, people usually use concealer for this. If you want a very seamless look, uh, I find concealer a little bit too thick, even if it's medium coverage. So if you use something more like a medium coverage foundation or a BB cream, that 
honestly works so well. You won't even be able to tell that it's there. And just really pat that in. Um, in terms of how long you have to pat it in, just keep going until you can't see where it is. That's kind of the rule that you have to follow. So it might have looked crazy to start with, but we're getting a nice bronze now. Whatever's left on that finger I can do on the side of my nose, and I'm just going to blend out the other side as well. But if you don't have time for this, don't do it. Just do the base. <laughs> so weird, because I usually have music playing when I do this, but I can't because of copyright issues. <laughs> I have to do this in silence. There you go, blend all of that out. A little bit on the side of the nose here as well. Uh, normally you can do it on the jawline as well, but I kind of trim my beard to go right over here, so I uh, don't really need that. And now the other step is optional as well, but I love this product because I like a dewy look. I don't like to look completely matte. I like to have a little bit of glow to my skin, so you don't have to do this uh, once again, but I'm kind of giving options for everyone. If you want to go a little bit more all out, more all out sorry, or if you want to uh, just do something simple and out of the door in five minutes, you, can, you could have literally finished this <laughs> before these two steps. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. It's something that you can use as a primer. You can use it as a highlighter. You can use it as a lightweight foundation. I use it as a highlighter. So once again, I'm literally going to take the tiniest bit. That's enough because I don't use a lot. And I'm only going to add this to the high points of my face. So I'm going to take a clean finger. And I'm literally just going to... Sorry, first time. <laughs> have to get uh, adjusted to all of these things. Just a little bit over here. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I don't tend to do my nose or anything here because I have quite an oily T-zone, so trust me, that's going to get shiny for me during the day anyway. So I just go here, I go a little bit under my brow bone, and I just kind of pat it in in this area here. But you can see it's, it's not glittery, it doesn't have any shimmer to it, it doesn't have any glitter to it, it just has that glow. So even though you're wearing something that's technically a highlighter, it doesn't look like you're wearing makeup. Everything's very lightweight here. And guys, I know obviously like I have lights and you're at a distance, but even close up, you can't you can't tell that this is makeup. The only time anybody can ever tell that I'm wearing it is some somebody who like sees me every single day because they know what I look like without any makeup on. I have some redness on my cheeks. Um, obviously, nobody's skin is absolutely perfect. So um, they do notice, oh, you, you do look a lot better today. Are you wearing anything? But they can't just tell by the fact that you can see product on my skin. So I usually just do it there. Normally the highlighting technique is also to go on the nose and on the cupid's bow, but I don't do that for myself because I get oily here anyway and I kind of trim around my cupid's bow so I think it's it's showcased enough. I don't think I need any more than that. And now it's time to set yourself with powder. So if you want to have an overall dewy look, you don't have to, but powder just kind of sets liquids and creams in place. I don't powder my whole face. I only powder uh, my T-zone because that's where I get oily and under the eyes because obviously that's where we have the most wrinkles, the most lines on the face, so that's where things can crease. Uh, now you can use whatever powder you want. There are some good drugstore powders that are uh, pressed powders and they already have powder puffs in them, so you don't have to invest in powder puffs, although you can get them really cheap. I use uh, the Laura Mercier Loose Setting Powder. It is kind of a staple in the beauty community. Everybody uses it. Every makeup artist has it in, in their kit, so I like using this one, but you can get a different powder in the drugstore. This one's quite expensive. You don't have to buy an expensive powder. I don't use a lot, but I have it in my kit anyway, so I kind of just, just go for it. Uh, and I'm just going to use a powder puff. Uh, normally, I'd use an eyeshadow brush, like a clean eyeshadow brush, because then I can get right into all of those creases. But because I promised to not use any brushes today, I'm going to go with a powder puff. So let's just get my mirror. I'm going to just get the kind of tip of that powder puff and get some powder there. Yeah, tap off any extra, and then looking directly into the mirror, I'm just going to set this like right over here. Not too much. This is literally just because the under eye tends to crease. That is it. 
it'll crease on anyone unless you literally have zero lines where if you're already into your 20s or like me closer to your 30s you will have lines unfortunately guys sorry to break that to you we don't stay young forever, but I don't mind aging at all. And that's set my under eyes nicely over there. And then I'll just take a little bit more of a liberal amount. And I will just do that all over my forehead because my forehead gets really, really shiny during the day. So I'm just going to kind of don't slide it. You want to just press it into the skin. And although with powders, like, you tend to see them at the beginning, like, right after you apply them, like, obviously you can see that powder sitting on top of your skin, which is why I don't really use powder bronzers or anything like that if I'm doing a seamless look because the, the liquids just tend to melt into the skin a little bit better. Uh, but you will, unless you're a really dry skin type, you will get oily during the day. You will sweat up a little bit, and that's when everything kind of blends in together. So actually, I like my makeup not immediately after I do it. I like it most after it kind of all blends in so I'm just going to pat that in and I don't really set the rest of my face because I want to keep that shine over here from the Charlotte Tilbury uh, flawless filter highlighter and keep the rest nice and natural so that's all I do here and then the only step I still have before using setting spray is eyebrows so guys tend to have quite full eyebrows. So I don't complain about mine either. I think they're pretty all right. So all I do is I use a setting gel. Now, pretty much every brand will have a brow setting gel. Uh, some of them are extremely expensive. Like obviously you have your brands that are known for brows like Benefit or Anastasia. Uh, Urban Decay have brow setting gels. Ella Mask has brow setting gels, but they're more on the pricey point. Uh, I was recommended this by a friend. This is from NYX. It's called NYX Control Freak Eyebrow Gel. Uh, and it's great. And I think I paid six or seven pounds for this. So it does a fantastic job. The eyebrows don't feel plastic. Uh, they feel nice and natural. They don't look like they've been set with anything. And then it just comes with a natural spoolie like this. I don't use this on my clients. I have a separate one for my clients. So I'm just going to go directly from the tube onto my brows. And I brush upwards just to kind of set everything in place. And I really like this one. Uh, guys, if you're not really into makeup, I'm just going to tell you right now that if something costs more, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's better. Uh, finding holy grail products in the drugstore will save you a lot of money uh, in the long run. And it's good to have those favorites that you don't have to break the bank for them. Obviously, I do like a bit of the luxury end as well. Like... Charlotte Tilbury Urban Decay, they're, they're not cheap, but uh, you are able to find alternatives in the drugstore, and there are some items that I just live for. Um, so that's pretty much all I do to my brows. Now, in terms of uh, filling in, if you want to fill in, uh, sometimes I get some sparse areas over here or at the top. They've kind of grown back nicely now, but if you do have sparse areas there, there is one pencil that I would highly recommend. It's from Urban Decay. It's called uh, the Brow Blade. So on one side, it'll have a normal eyebrow pencil. Uh, I think it's waterproof as well. And then on the other side, it has an ink stain. I've searched my entire house for my pencil. I, I just can't find it. My mom recently visited me. Maybe she stole it from me. Mom, do you have my pencil? <laughs> But uh, it, the ink stain literally just mimics uh, actual hair strokes. So you can uh, just use that end to fill in wherever it's a little bit more sparse and you don't have to fill in the entire eyebrow with pencil. And trust me, you cannot tell that it's even there. My little trick is to go with a color that's actually a little bit paler than my eyebrows. So I kind of have a neutral brown eye, uh, eyebrow color and hair color in general. So I went for the taupe one and... You kind of need, it's undetectable and I filled it in nicely, but I can't show you that because I can't find my eyebrow pencil right now um, and my eyebrows are pretty full at the moment anyway. So then to finish everything off, this is not a uh, negotiable. This is a non-negotiable. It's a setting spray and I use the Urban Decay one uh, and just, 
I know it's uh, a little bit on the pricier side. It's, I think it's 24 pounds for a bottle, but it lasts you forever, and it's the best setting spray out there. Honestly, uh, some other brands will have setting sprays that are a little bit more on the cheap price point, but look into the ingredients more often than not. It's just rose water or cucumber water, and it won't really do anything for you. This is temperature control technology, and ask anyone who's ever used it. It sets everything in place. Nothing moves for 16 hours. So you literally just give it a shake to activate the formula, and then you just spray all over your face. And then I just kind of waft it uh, for it to dry. And that's all it is, guys. So uh, no matter how much product you put on, if you do the bronzing stage and the highlighting stage or not, or you just do the base and then you set it with powder, use the setting spray because you don't want to have to touch up during the day. And that's it. That's the simple look, guys. I do the really pretentious YouTuber insert glamorous music side shots but i'm not gonna do that today uh this is kind of the finished look that you get uh very simple i'll zoom in even you can't really tell that the makeup's there i don't think so yeah but if you compare it beginning to end you can see the difference uh if you're a woman watching this you literally all have you just have to pop on a little bit of lip gloss or uh lipstick and maybe a mascara and that's your look done as well so it's pretty much for everyone and i hope you enjoyed it if you did let me know in the comment section below let me know what other things you would like to see if you have any questions ask me i'll, I'll be answering them regularly as well and hope to see you next week bye thanks for watching